Hello viewers, last class we talked about safety performance indicators. Uh, this class is continuation of what we have talked last time. We were discussing the case study, case study of uh, offshore dock site where the, where the ships will bring the material to the offloading gantry. From there, it is offloaded through pipeline, it will go to bulk tanks, from bulk tank it will go to road tanker. This is a scenario yesterday we, we have talked and in this we have identified three hazardous scenarios. One is pipeline, other is bulk tankers, third is road tanker. We may select many more scenarios also, but for the case study purpose we have selected these three as the major hazards. Hazards of the pipeline where the, where the hazardous material is being carried, hazards in the bulk tank where the hazardous material is stored. These bulk tanks, suppose if the any breakdown happens, if it comes out, then we have a burn so that this all hazardous materials will not go to environment. So that is one of the requirement when you are storing the hazardous materials. So this is this bond is also very important. If this also breaks, then it will go to community. So bulk tank associated with this bond and the road tanker, road tanker daily road tankers will come get it unloaded and take it. These three are the hazardous hazards, but understand hazard itself will not give you clarity, every hazard is divided into three parts. Yesterday we have discussed one is the hazardous element, other is the initiating mechanism, third is the target. These three combined we call hazard. If you have to address hazard, you have to address all these three things. Hazardous element is which is the one which is having potential to cause the hazard. Some cases here itself we can put the interventions like if you are using a, a liquid for cleaning the tank very hazardous liquid. You may eliminate it by putting non hazardous liquid, but 95 percent, 95 to 99 percent of the cases you have to put the interventions at the initiating mechanisms. Very important, very important to know what are the initiating mechanisms and you have to put interventions to control those initiating mechanisms. That is more important. So, risk control systems we are going to put at the initiating mechanisms. Example, suppose a liquid is going in the pipe, this liquid hazardous liquid as long as it is in the pipe nothing will happen. The for the technology purpose you have to take the hazardous liquid, you cannot eliminate it. As long as it is in the pipe, nothing is going to happen. What is the initiating mechanism? If the pipe is weak, pipe breaks, then the hazardous liquid will come out. We have to put intervention so that this pipe will not break. That is the intervention. If the pipe does not break, as long as you control the pipe not breaking it, the hazardous liquid is within the boundary. 
nothing it is not going to do anything like electricity when it is on the line nothing is going to happen it can be it can be 32 kV 64 kV or 128 kV whatever it may be very high voltages as long as it is within the line nothing is going to happen for our survival we require electricity but if it comes out if you don't make proper connections or if you are working at the time power comes in then it will kill so we have to put risk control system there also so the hazards are there in our technology it is required because of the uh, because of our comfort because of more power putting risk control systems these hazardous elements will become our slaves we have to bring make the hazardous elements slaves as long as tiger is in the cage it is a slave cage is the risk control system if you break the cage if you don't lock the cage if you don't make the cage very effective tiger will come out the slave will become real tiger so risk control systems are very very important okay we also talk the safety performance indicators conventional traditional safety performance indicators what you see outside in every organization we have shown the uh, workshop results people talk fatalities people talk incidents people talk accidents people talk leakages they are the safety performance indicators friends those things are not going to help improve the occupational health safety management system the performance indicators which will help the ohs ms system or you should know the weakness of the system not the failure of the system you have been hearing failure of the systems are the performance indicators no they are not the real performance indicators weakness of the system if you know the weakness of the system then you can take corrective actions during the weakness of the system so that failures will not happen they are called the lagging indicators similarly the effectiveness of the system whether the system how effectively it is working that we call leading indicators by instituting a system of understanding identifying measuring leading and lagging indicators using both and analyzing them you will really achieve your safety performance they are real the safety performance indicators in the earlier session we have talked the hazard hazardous elements the pipelines the tank burn, tank storage tanks and uh, carrying the transportation tanks they all finally lead to the following major initiating mechanisms one is wear corrosion wear of the pipelines wear of the tanks wear of the road tanks corrosion of the pipelines corrosion of the valves corrosion of the pumps or damage of the lines damage of the pumps overfilling underfilling over pressurization pressurization under pressurization fire and explosion in the tank in the pipe in the road tanker and uh, other accidental releases people not closing the valves people not closing the uh, stopping the pumps all these things are the initiating mechanisms for all these initiating mechanisms we are going to put the risk control systems i told you we have nine common risk control systems after a lot of research people have come 
first you put this nine risk control systems in place over and above you can you can add some more thing so suppose we have put inspection and maintenance which is called itpm very important this is one of the risk control system what are the things which we will do here inspection and maintenance of flexible hoses couplings pumps valves flanges fixed pipes bulk tanks all these things we will do inspection it is applicable to which of the initiating mechanism the inspection of the hoses couplings it will address to where it is acceptable to corrosion if you want to control wear initiating mecha mechanism you have to do the inspection and maintenance of the following things and damage you can inspect and valve filling pressurization the inspection of flexible hoses will not come hence we are not shown here similarly if you see instrumentation what inspection will do In instrumentation will will tell about the wear oh, okay nowadays in the very very complicated pipelines in the steel plants if you go we have instrumentation there but here we don't have instrumentation so we use instrumentation for uh, over fill over and under pressurization similarly tank vents tank vent is important for what fire if the tank is venting where what what is the initiating mechanism it will control fire and explosion hence we will do it here coming to staff competence that is one more the risk control system out of nine risk control systems staff competence staff competence should cover what selection of compatible tank people should have competencies to select the right tank if you if you if you put the risk this risk control system this is applicable to which initiating mechanism this is if if you if you if you put right tank then corrosion will not happen or wear will not happen or overfilling will not happen or fire and explosions will not happen suppose if you say driver error driver error is one of the thing under the staff competence you have to use driver error for if initiating mechanism is the damage how will it be damaged drivers hitting the pipes that's why we have taken driver error as the staff competence it will it will it will be applied to damage so like this for all the risk control systems like operating procedures so correct coupling opening closing valve starting pumps operating procedures people should put correct coupling people should close correct valves people should have right startup pumps this is applicable to which initiating mechanism if you do this correctly damages will not happen hence by applying this you can control the damage by applying this risk control system you can control the damage you can control over over refilling you can control accidental releases by doing the correct if, if you don't do coupling properly hose pipe then something leak leak will happen that is other accidental release so if you want to control this this is the risk control system which we have to use so for 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 wear what are the various risk control system all nine ten risk control systems may not be applicable for all the initiating mechanisms by doing this we are trying to select which are the risk control systems we have to use for initiating mechanisms okay similarly plant change communication permit to work permit to work permit to work we have added actually isolate isolating mechanisms the isolating mechanisms will be 
more useful for overfilling the overfilling of the tanks or damaging many places isolating mechanisms will be applicable everywhere emergency arrangement where are the emergency arrangements will be applicable to which of the uh, initiating mechanism fire and explosion fire if you want to control if you want not fire and explosion to happen you should have emergency arrangements okay so these are the these are the risk control systems i am summarizing these are these are the risk control systems say so, 10 risk control systems what we have discussed the initiating mechanism you have to put against initiating mechanism risk control systems how what sort of initiating mechanism you have for the how many risk control systems are required we have decided earlier suppose initiating mechanism is plant or equipment in unsafe condition that is one of the initiate if the plant is unsafe condition then the hazards will open out so itpm suppose itpm is one of the risk control system from from the initiating mechanism we have to find out lagging indicators and leading indicators lagging indicators will tell the weakness of the system leading indi indicators will tell the effectiveness so for every initiating mechanism if you want to apply risk control system you put the risk control system whether the risk control system is working effectively or not for that you have to find out the lagging indicator you have to find out the leading indicator for plant or equipment in unsafe condition if this is the initiating mechanism if itps inspection and maintenance i inspection testing and maintenance is the risk control system what is the outcome what is the outcome you expect by putting this inspection and maintenance if plant and equipment unsafe condition what outcome you look for the outcome you look for is desired outcomes no unexpected loss of containment due to failure of flexible hoses by inspection and maintenance what is the outcome you look for no unexpected loss of containment due to failure of flexible hoses that is what you require that's why you do you put this itpm as the risk control system or no unexpected loss containment from couplings pumps valves flanges fixed pipes bulk tanks or inst or instrumentation no loss of contain no losses should happen unexpected losses for that you do inspection and maintenance this is the outcome so what is the weakness in the system the weakness of the system is unexpected number of unexpected loss of containments this is what you want outcome should be like this but you want you are finding out the weakness of the system weakness of the system is how many times unexpected loss of containment small not big due to failure of flexible hoses failure of couplings failure of pumps failure of valves failure of flanges happened not total failure of the valves only the number of unexpected loss of containment leakages sweating small nothing the plant has not stopped because of that but it is showing the weakness all these things you should measure suppose if you have if you have 10 pipelines all the 10 pipelines you have to find out this each pipeline has got five valves 
10 pipelines has got 50 valves, all 50 valves you have to find out unexpected loss. So, you should have a system to find out unexpected loss from all, all these things. How much big data it is? Similarly, leading indicator. What is leading indicator? The process controls if you give for this plant and equipment unsafe condition, if you put it through inspection and maintenance, what will be the leading indicators? Percentage of safety critical equipment that performs to specification. Your safety critical equipments, how many percentage of thing, percent of percent of the equipments? when you have seen are performing the way they should perform. Nothing has happened, but 100 percent performance. How many percentage of maintenance actions identified which are completed? You have identified ITPM is maintenance is also there. So, you have identified say 100 maintenance activities for some, some problems, some small problems. How many of them are completed? What percentage is completed? If it is 100 percent completed, what do you call? The system is effective. If it is 70 percent completed, will you call system is effective? It depends. If it is the critical equipment, 100 percent compliance is to, to be there. If it is non-critical equipment, 100 percent need not be there. Okay. So, <coughs> the, these are not failures, failed compliance to your actions compliance to your actions to keep the system effective is the leading indicator. Small failures is the lagging indicator, not big failures, total failures, no to, these are not the total failures. So, lagging indicators These are the lagging indicators, these are the leading indicators for one initiating mechanism. It is showing one line, but the total data is numerous from here. You should have lagging indicator of data of flexible hoses, couplings, pumps, valves, flanges, all these things. It, it becomes big, big data. Similarly, you take critical tasks undertaken dangerously as the initiating mechanism. Now, you put it through staff competence. For example, I have taken staff competence. Earlier, I have taken ITPM. So, for this, what is the outcome you expect? Operators and contractors have the required knowledge, enable effect and to enable effective product transfer from ship. So, product transfer for transferring the from ship to pipelines, pipelines to tanker, tanker to all these things, people should have enough knowledge. That is what you expect. What is the lagging indicator? Number of times product transfer does not proceed as planned due to errors made by the staff. How many, you see nothing, nothing great loss has happened, but how many times the transfer did not happen because of the competency of the people. because of the competency of the people. How many times it happened? How many times pipeline transfer has not happened? How many times the tanker transfer not happened? How many times people not do? So, it is failures, small failures. If it is happening more times, you, you have to take corrective action. If it happened once, probably you may not take, but you are seeing the weakness of the system. Similarly, when you come to le leading indicator, the inputs for the leading indicator is operational procedures, written instructions, working work practices, all these things should be there. Now, leading indicator is percentage of procedures which are reviewed. The procedures for doing all these things, it should be live, it should be reviewed and revised within the designated period. If a procedure is to be reviewed within this much period, has it been reviewed? So, percentage are reviewed, if, they are, if it is coming to very less, that means your system eff effectiveness can be, why do you want to review? Reviewing people do 
if any changes has to be made it they, they will make if any redundancy is there that they will see the redundancy similarly plant or process outside safe operating conditions outside safe operating conditions so instrumentation alarms is the risk control system bhopal disaster has happened when there is a leak mic leak methyl isocyanide leak happening people are not able to ascertain from the control room they are not the people who are there they are not they are not able to read something wrong is happening instrumentation alarms so major thing happened if you have the desired outcomes safety critical instrumentation and alarms correctly indicate when process conditions exceed safe operating limits that is the outcome it has not shown here mick bhopal this thing to happen what is that you have to measure number of safety critical instruments alarms that fail to operate as designed as designed it has not failed totally something it is showing more something it is showing less maybe ca calibration not done N what are the number of small things which have happened to affect the desired outcome that we have to, they are the lagging indicators so for the leading indicators what is the input operational procedures instrumentation instrumental and alarm systems they are the things which we have to do <clears throat> what are the leading indicators percentage of functional tests of safety critical instruments and alarms completed to schedule all this for the critical equipments you should you should test whether they are working or not how many what percentage of the instruments alarms you have completed done that will show the effectiveness of the system percentage of maintenance actions to rectify faults of the safety critical equipment the safety critical equipment some defects are shown how many you have completed that is the leading indicator so this is for the effectiveness this is for the system weakness so by this time you may have understood how initiating mechanism put through risk control systems lead to lagging indicators when it is to to see that it is working at the desired outcome or not or how the leading indicators are coming so for in, for every, if you have 100 initiating mechanisms and each initiating mechanism has got say 10 uh, 5 risk control systems that much that much lagging indicators will come huge data nothing has failed please understand but you have the data to understand the system failure system weakness and system effectiveness similarly plant change same explanations you can do plant design communication so communication whether the well, see the activities not properly coordinated proper communication has to be done if communication is the risk control system what do you what do you expect what is the outcome you expect from this effective management of product transfer storage effective warning problems in time to take remedial action if any anything anything is wrong happening it should be in time it is to be communicated so that they will understand that is the communication so how many times it is not happened so percentage of product transfer where authorization to transfer the transfer lines successfully completed before the transfer is completed here mostly you you will see in terms of percentages percentage what you plan 
how much percentage you have completed. Here you see the small failures. Similarly, permit to work very, very important. Permit to work, especially the energy isolations part of part of permit to work. It will it if you do permit to work energy isolations properly during the maintenance, during the operation, people will not get hurt. Believe me, out of the fatalities, major incidents which are happening, 80% attribute to only energy isolations. That's why I decided to take one class for you on energy isolations. People do not have proper concept of energy isolations. That's why the OHS management system, people are not able to effectively control. So next class will be uh, on energy, con uh, energy isolations. So permit to work, energy isolation is part of permit to work. Emergency arrangement. So like that, we have seen for all the initiating mechanisms, how to apply risk control systems. From risk control system, how will you bring out lagging indicators, leading indicators. Now I am, I am putting everything in one place. So for inspection and maintenance, these are the, for this risk control system, these are the lagging indicator, these are the leading indicator. We have not put more initiating mechanisms, only few initiating mechanisms. For that I am writing here. If you put all initiating mechanisms, probably this list will be much more. So this is the risk control system, these are the lagging indicators, these are the leading indicators. This is the plant change leading lagging indicators. We have discussed already these things. Communication, permit to work, what are the lagging indicators, what are the leading indicators. Actually, this permit to work has to be done much more elaboratedly. So, this, this is very little it is written. In my view, we should take much more in the permit to work. All energy isolations we should put at the risk control system and from there we should take out lot of lagging and leading indicators. Plant design, emergency arrangements. <coughs> so you by putting lagging indicators, leading indicators for all your hazardous elements with different initiating mechanisms you will get huge data of lagging indicators, leading indicators. Believe me, one of the failures of the occupational health and management system is you do not have data. People see fatalities, incidents are the data, you have very little data. From there you do not, you, you cannot do any analysis, analytics. The age of today is analytics. Analytics, data analytics in any field, if you have plenty of data with you, which is called discrete analytics, how to generate data. We are, I have given you inputs, how to generate data, lagging indicators, leading indicators. That means, if you do that properly, that is called you have done descriptive analytics. From that data, you can have Predictive predictions, which is called predictive analytics. If you predict correctly, then you can er stop it, which is called prescriptive analytics. So, data analytics will help you to reduce the incidents, to control the incidents, to manage very well. So, safety is one of the area where analytics has gotten. For that, the data is required, I told you how to generate data, safety performance indicators. 
so how do you after collecting the data from the safety performance indicators you have huge data qualitative and quantitative qualitative means you may have rubbish data it will not help you from the lagging and leading indicators you will get very qualitative data like right data very impressive data and high quantity numbers you will get huge data this will be generated in erp systems if you have got enterprise resource planning every organization will have it maybe sap system in the sap system you can generate you can put all the data <coughs> under safety management system under maintenance management systems under operation management systems under supply chain systems under quality assurance systems this data <coughs> will not be available at one place the lagging indicators leading indicators for the plant maintenance will be generated by maintenance management systems not safety management systems but to address your safety management system ohs systems you have to pick up from the maintenance management system similarly operation procedures not followed properly operation operation fluctuations operational problems it is available in the operation management system not in your safety management safety management system what you have is the accidents near misses some 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 uh, fatalities or the incidents all those things that is the very 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 small part of the data minute part of the data major data you'll get from maintenance management systems operation management system supply chain system quality assurance system all these systems you will get the both lagging indicators leading indicators these are normally available in the erp now nowadays no organization runs without erp system maybe different you some somebody may have sap erp system somebody may have their own erp systems but they are all available in the erp systems then when you have all this data with you which we call big data very big data available then you have to review the data so called could be reviewed using data analytics data analytics methods not pie charts and bar charts pie charts and bar charts all those things will come come in the descriptive analytics data analytics means using using uh, when you have data collected from here you have to stop it you have to predict prediction analysis predict prediction is brought using many data analytic techniques statistical tools many statistical techniques people use to under, bring the uh, to bring the what is going to happen then you can put the prescription so only collecting this data and sleeping on that will not help you you have to put data analytics and get finally the prediction and prescription you get so many so many items to take action after all taking action will cost resources will cost money you may not be able to do everything at a time then you have to prioritize seeing the, seeing your business scenarios seeing your resources nothing is unlimited money is un not unlimited resources are not unlimited rightly you have to prioritize which actions you have to take first which corrective actions you have to take hence corrective actions are to be prioritized and implemented if you do this your occupational health and safety management system will really work very effectively and you will be able to protect people property community environment effectively so that is how safety performance indicators is going to help 
in the collection of safety performance indicators in the whole of occupational health safety management system i said energy isolations are going to play a very important role hence next session we'll speak on energy isolations one one session thank you